that's it. And that'll do it. Biggie Boy is back in a big way tonight. I'm going to be in here beating guys and get my chance. Jorginho Rosen strike, ladies and gentlemen. Got it. Oh, look like, yep. That was it. So Montana J. La Rosa submits Nadia Kassam. So I just want to keep getting more fights and keep racking up the wins. Montana De La Rosa. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. We have a busy show today, uh, Matt, which I'm looking forward to. In just a moment, we have a, a, a friend of mine, and I know you like him too, returning. Oh. Uh, big UFC fan. Uh, really, really uh, great comedian. Ronnie Chang, um, huge UFC fan. We also have uh, Montana De La Rosa and Jarzinho Rosenstrike. The uh, main event, we had Cyril Gunn. We have Jarzinho today. It's a jam-packed, um, jam-packed show. I like it when you say that. You're right. Should we bring in Ronnie Chang? He is, I believe, here. I can't wait um, to which talk is, to Ronnie. Yeah, and he doesn't need this. He's Ronnie has got a great career uh, with The Daily Show. He just loves UFC. There he is. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up, Ronnie? How you doing? Matt was just saying when you were connecting that you look younger than last time. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is that? <laughs> what do you use? Noxzema? What do you do? What do you do to do all the de-aging? <laughs> yeah. Is it the Wing Chun? I mean, I would say jujitsu, but oh. you, you, <laughs> you've been doing jujitsu your whole life and you look like that. So well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> man, talk about turning a, a compliment and just <laughs> taking his sword out at me. And you know what's funny? <laughs> just yesterday, Ronnie, I was rolling. Look at my right, look at my right eye. What I look like that? fucking, I, you know, they call it the gentle art, but Jimmy, oh. some people don't get the memo about being it, being the gentle art. You know, I was doing some round robin, um, passing the guard, and my one of my brown belts, Pat DeFranco, he used to fight in the cage. You know, he's an MMA fighter, so you know, he wanted to soften me up a little bit, and somehow I got a right hand. Well, you okay? It happens. Yeah, I'll survive. I think I look cool, Matt. You gotta defend yourself at all times, man. Ronnie, the last time that what I have a fond memory. Uptown in Manhattan, outside the uh, stand-up New York, me and you connected. Yes, sir. Doing our Tai yes, Chi, sir. not Tai Chi, Wing Chun. Yo, that video gave that vid that video gave me a lot of street cred with the <laughs> with the MMA fans back in Australia, man. They were Did like, it? I cannot believe you touched Matt Sarah. Yeah. Well, with my permission. They were like, yeah, you got you got huge following. Hey, have you been have you been to Australia, by the way? I love the Australians. They like me. I, I have, they, they're, they're great. Yeah, yeah. I went down there a couple of times at the corner of Raging Al, and they love Raging Al also. Everybody mm -hmm. loves Raging Al. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they're so nice. The Australian people were so nice, Jimmy. Yeah, I've been there. It's, yeah. it's, I've been there once. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, Sydney and uh, Melbourne, I spent, uh, Melbourne. About, yeah, yeah, about a week. Did you go off and running, or are you just, you did one gig down there? No, man, I used to live there. I lived there for like 10 years. Oh, maybe I knew uh, that and then just yeah, forgot. I lived what, in Australia. Oh, yeah, from yeah. where? What, what brought you to Australia? You, I might have known this and my memory just sucked. I, I, Dude, you're such a good friend no, with Ronnie. Okay. I went there. I lived there a decade. <laughs> Did I forget? I didn't know him. Then. My good friend, Ronnie. Lived in, if I had one of my good friends living in fucking Hong Kong, I know that my friend's not in the States. No, but this was before we met. I'm sorry. Ronnie got me on the defense then. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, was, I, I went to Australia for law school, so oh, I ended up living man. there for like 10 years, and yeah, I started doing stand-up comedy there, and um, I, I started doing Wing Chun there, so Australia's got a, it, it, when I go back to Australia, it feels like going back, you know, hometown vibes. Right, but by the way, what kind of law? What, what, why law school in Australia? Because like, you, you wanted to practice in Australia, I guess, right? Well, um, because honestly, it's because law school in Australia is undergraduate, so you can like, you, oh. you can go in when you're when you're 19 as opposed to you know having to study four years and then going to law school again so it's like you um uh the, honestly the smartest thing you can do is uh go to law school in australia or the uk where it's an undergraduate degree and then go work in america where you get 
you get paid more. <laughs> so that oh. way you maximize your, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's an undergraduate the degree there. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you're a legit, you, I mean, you and I used to talk at the Comedy Cellar all the time about UFC yeah. and MMA. Like, you're a legit fan of the sport. Like, you, you know who the fighters are and you, you love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to purge myself, I think. But yeah, I, I man, I've been watching since I remember we, uh, oh no, I, I can't say, uh, Dana, Dana White's going to come after me. But let's just say, in, I remember in college in Australia, me and my friends will watch it, even though it was hard to get uh, UFC yeah. uh, 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 <laughs> fights down in Australia. Uh, we would gather in our room and we watch the fights, man. It was great. And I remember, man, it was like, uh, I'm, I'm preaching to a choir here. Obviously, we're all UFC fans, but like, um, I remember before, the, just before the UFC was blowing up, I mean, it, you know, we had UFC 1, 2, 3. I remember it was watching clips of, of people just fighting on the street. And that was how we would be like, oh, this style versus that style would work. You know, you, you YouTube like karate versus taekwondo. And that's how we like get our fix of fights that wasn't just boxing, right? You just want to see some different techniques and styles. And then the UFC came in and that, that became it. And we were just watching it. So yeah, been watching for a long time, follow all the fighters. It's, it's a real thrill to honestly talk to people about it. Um, especially people who've been in the ring fighting, right? Actual athletes, not, not, not just athletes, but champions. Well, Ronnie, are you, yes, are you still doing Wing Chun or did you just totally transition to BJJ? Or no, well, yeah, well, after I, it's interesting after I managed, after I spoke to you guys, I that was like what two, three years ago. Yeah, yeah. I went pretty hard into jujitsu, man. So I started training uh, in New York City, just you know, um, nearby my house, uh, very convenient. And man, it's been, uh, I feel like a jujitsu evangelist now. I won't shut up about it. Everyone <laughs> I go to, I'm like, hey, do you do it? Yeah, at the cell, I'm always like, hey, do you guys do jujitsu? Do and it. it it, it, the beauty of it is I travel so much for work, right? Jim would always on yeah. tour or daily show stuff, man, every city in the world has like yeah. at least five or six jujitsu schools. I'm in Syracuse, New York, doing a college. There's a jujitsu school. You know, I, I'm in Gold Coast, Australia. There's a jujitsu, there's like eight yeah. jujitsu schools, you know? In fact, jujitsu schools have become like a sign of gentrification. Like Gold Coast, Australia used to be like really like, uh, uh, a shout out to Gold Coast, super trashy. It used to be like, Tough strip area. clubs and, 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 and motorcycle gangs. And now when you go back there now, it's all coffee shops and jujitsu and, and yoga, right? And, it, you know, so, so every city you go to in the world, that's jujitsu. And when you're, when you're like, um, I guess, when you're like a white blue belt like me, you message people and they let you drop in, you know? It's a it's very welcoming environment. Everyone's always super friendly. You know, I go there just to get a workout, just to keep my sanity. And it's like meditation. It's like meditation. You have to stay in the moment. How often do you go? How Because I started thinking kickboxing. I wanted to take jujitsu. I, I think it's much more practical with what I'll have to deal with on the subway. Uh, and how and how often do you go? A couple times a week? Man, I mean, I haven't, you know, after, when since the pandemic, since March 2020, right. haven't been able to do it that much. Although I was in Australia for most of 2020. Um, and... It, uh, towards the end of 2020, uh, the state of Queensland in Australia actually uh, has had zero virus count for all the years. So the, everything stayed open. So if you go to Brisbane, Australia, or, or Queensland, the state of Queensland, Brisbane, Gold Coast, these are all cities in Queensland. If you, if you go to Queensland right now, um, it's like a time capsule. Like when you go into, when you go into uh, the city, it's, you know, no, like all the restaurants are open, jujitsu is going on. It's like the virus never happened, and they don't know how how good they have it. Like when you're in Queensland, they're like, "What? Why are you wearing a mask?" They, if you wear a mask in Queensland, they literally are like, "Oh, you're like you're you're like being a bit of a weirdo." Oh, they you think so, they think it's strange, yeah. Yeah, so I was able to train a bit there. But sorry, Jim, to answer your question, I mean, I I got addicted bad, man. I was going like what? I was going like every day. So when I when I started doing jujitsu in about uh, 2018, end of 2018. I was going like every day. I would go. Sometimes I go twice a day. It was it was becoming a real problem. Yeah, just to hit the mats. Yeah. Did you throw away your wooden dummy? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I you know the Wing Chun thing. Like it's hard to um, when you're traveling. It's hard to find. It just jujitsu has just kind of dominated the martial arts culture. So it's like it's just easier to find a jujitsu school, you know. And it's it's uh every, like I said, every city you go, because I travel so much for work, you know, and you don't want to be the, you don't want to be doing the martial art where you're training one week and then the next week you're not training, you know, you want consistency. And so jujitsu was just 
just numerically more schools. And so it was just easier to kind of find places to trade. We have uh, half of the main event just stepped into the waiting room. Oh uh, who we're going to bring into the room now, Jarzinho Rosenstrike. Jarzinho, how are you? How are you doing, sir? Good, I'm good. How are you guys? Good to see you. Man. Awesome. We were, uh, we were talking, Matt and I and Ronnie were talking right before you came in about what, how impressive it was. Uh, you know, you were 11-0, you had a tough fight against Francis, and then how well you looked against Junior. Like, how was it for you to adjust to that first loss? Because you seemed to take it okay, and it really hurts a lot of guys, and it didn't seem to hurt your momentum at all. I mean, it hurts. Um, it affects me in a lot of ways, but if I, I, can, I can make two choices, sit back and, and think a lot about it, or go back to the gym and work even harder than before and come back. So that was my choice and that's why I look it so good. And I try to move forward, don't only look at the past. I don't forget it, but I'm don't look at it. So. Now, your, let me ask you, Arzino, did you have to get any kind of um, mental coach or anything? Because a lot of guys do that nowadays. A lot of greats like GSP and you know other fighters, uh, they get mental coaches to help them yeah. get over that hurdle and, of, of what they just been through of, of a loss. Did you or, or no? No, I didn't. But um, most of the time you look at your fights or you analyze your fight like, okay, maybe, maybe he wanted it more than me that night. So then you're going to look, you're going to look back. Like, how was my camp? How was this? How was that? How was everything going through the fight? So am I making, making a couple of mistakes during, during my preparation uh, going through the fight? So I always blame myself and uh, make sure that after that fight, I make sure that everything was better. And, and, and even around me, we were on everything that, that I can be victorious again. Jorginho, speaking of your, uh, sorry guys, you don't mind if I ask him. Not question. at all. No, no, go ahead, brother. <laughs> yeah, Jorginho, um, like um, when you're, when you're, you're talking about your fight preparation and the people you have around you. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, when you start out in anything, especially fighting professionally, you kind of have no team, right? You're kind of on your own, you're going for classes. Like how hard is it to build the net, the, the team of people around you? Like, do you, do you, do you, um, where do you get the recommendations for these people? Like uh, in terms of like, do you have the network to find them? Do you put a call out? Do you interview them? Like, or do you go by word of mouth? Like how hard is it to build the team that prepares you for the, for the fights? Okay, for me at this point, it, it, it goes like um, automatically. I have my coach, Michael Bob. He recognized me from since I was uh, on, on the age of 17. And he kind of um, give it a steering. Uh, I've been striking with him for years. And now we're in the UFC. We, we went to Hard Knocks to find our place there to make it our home. But there wasn't it wasn't the case. We now we are at American Top Team. We see all those high level high level wrestlers and striking coaches. They are there, and that's the way we 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 building up because it's feel good also, and and it have to be be how how can I say this? Uh, it has that it has to feel good, and on the level that I am, it has to be above me, and that is the case in American Top Team. So. Um, we, we had a lot of suggest, suggestions for how we should train, how we can do this, how we can do that. But not to forget, I'm just two years in the USC now and everything is new. Even being joining the States now is new and I'm still uh, knowing everything, learning the MMA game, uh, learn how to go out to talk with you guys with the media as well. So everything is new for me and I'm, I'm doing my best to put down my best performance in any kind of way and everything that I, I'm, I'm accomplished right now. And, and a guy like you're fighting too. Cyril Ghan is, is impressive. He, he's another guy who has not been in the UFC that long. Uh, and, and of the seven wins, I think what impressed me the most is, is the fact that one is a decision and then it's three submissions, three knockouts. Like he seems to be pretty effective in every area of MMA. If I look at a fighter as Cyril, I, I see a fighter that he can do everything. So... That can mean one thing. I'm going to stand in front of me in my best shape ever. I'm going to be there, make sure that I win this fight and nothing else is going to stop me. 
Yeah, he has a beautiful uh, a left body kick, which I'm sure you're aware of it. I mean, if I've seen it, you've noticed it. Um, and uh, I, I'm sure you're prepared for that. But I wonder if he has fought... You you have such great low leg kicks as well. I mean, again, even in the Ngannou fight, you threw a, a tremendous leg kick uh, to start the fight against uh, Dos Santos. You had a lot of uh, beautiful low leg kicks. So I don't know if he has fought anybody that does that as well as you uh, either. Uh, we're going to see it on this Saturday. So, I mean... Not to take away the guy do a, job, a great, a phenomenal job. You win this fight, and that's what what you have to do to get in the top. And I'm impressed by his work. But this Saturday is my time, and yeah, we're gonna let them, we're gonna let everything go. It's gonna be fireworks. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I noticed. I can't. I you know your. Sh I love your shirt. Do you like the Simpsons, or is that just a comfortable shirt, yours? You know. I like The Simpsons too. <laughs> uh, you do like The Simpsons, don't you? <laughs> now, is that one of your you, now Simpsons or Family Guy? You can only have one. I go Simpsons. I go Simpsons. You're, I go Simpsons. Hey, there's rarely somebody that goes, oh, I like both. They're either Team Simpsons or yeah. Team Family Guy. But you're <laughs> Team Simpsons. Team 100%. <laughs> okay. I've never seen a full episode of The Simpsons. I've never, I know it's, I'm a pop culture idiot. I've seen little moments of it. It's very funny. Yeah. And I've never seen a full episode. I always was the Simpson. It's funny. It's relaxed. And yeah, make me laugh a lot. Yeah. It's supposed to be one of the greatest shows ever. I mean, everybody, uh, I by the way, that, I, what did you get into it when it started or did you like catch up when people told you about it? What, what got you into the show? I mean, growing up, I grew a little bit up with it. So seeing it on the television and then it's kind of while I'm growing up, I just stopped watching it. And now I'm all, all in it. I think Simpsons is older than you, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> can, doesn't you can, can you can you talk a bit about like do you enjoy like uh, doing press conferences immediately after fights? Like do you, do you want like a break? Like can we do it the next day? Or are you okay with like just going to the cage fighting someone and then having to do a, like a big press conference afterward? No, I'm okay with it. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I mean, if I was fighting someone for like, you know, 25 minutes, I'd be like, you know what, can we do the press conference tomorrow? Because this is, I am <laughs> emotionally drained. I think it's better to do it, do it right away. And then I'm done with it. So tomorrow I can do something else. <laughs> and not to mention, he only has one loss. If he was batting 500, he'd be like, ah, you know, half the times I love the press conferences. Half the times they suck. But yeah. he only had one bad experience at a press conference. You know, now he's, he's usually sitting there saying how he put a guy unconscious. <laughs> yeah, no, your press conferences are usually pretty quick because the fights are quick. So it's like, all right, well, you you know, what was it like the, the uh, 15 seconds it took you to knock that guy out? So I guess, yeah, you don't mind a press conference after a quick fight like that. Yeah, that's for sure. Sometimes the fights are long, but sometimes the fight can be short. So, Well, yeah, the Overeem was five rounds. I mean, that was the full, uh, yeah. full five rounds. What do you think, by the way, of uh, uh, John Jones uh, jumping up to heavyweight? What do you think of that? Nah, it's, it's motivating. I mean, John Jones is one of the best ever, and knowing he's coming to the heavyweight, I mean, the top three, top four. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can face a guy anytime. So the only thing I know is train hard, make sure you're ready when that fight comes, you want to win that fight. Let me, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I just no, no. your thoughts. If you've watched uh, this over this, this past weekend, uh, the, uh, Derek Lewis versus Curtis Blades, your thoughts on that fight? One, one, one more time. Curtis Blades versus uh, Derek Lewis, the Black Beast. Did you watch? Did you watch? I, yeah, yes, I did. I did. I did. What What is your thoughts on that? No, I think Derek had a great timing, and he was waiting. He was waiting for that punch, like as he as he said, he was waiting for that number one punch, and Blades shoot right into it. And we know Blades gonna shoot, so I think ah, it's a bad timing for Blades, but a good timing for Lewis. Yeah, and he said he couldn't get started till we, well, you know, he's so honest, Derek Lewis, and and he said that he just couldn't even in even in um, warm ups, he just couldn't get his energy going. He felt like he just couldn't get it moving. So I guess he really was just waiting to, to for his energy, so he didn't waste his energy. I'm guessing. Nah, I mean, sometimes you have to know when, when, when how to place your energy in the fight, but sometimes opportunities are there, but you're too tired to take it. So you have to know how you spread your energies and during the 25 minutes. 
have you had that? Have you been in the cage and went like, oh, shit, I just don't have a lot of energy tonight or I didn't time something out right and I'm way more tired than I should be? I think everyone has that in a fight because some fighters, every fighters are different. So sometimes you train this and you get him there, but you can't finish the fight. And then he moved that way. And then it's like in the overing fight, I was frustrated in the fight. He was doing this and I'm like, okay, I'm going to catch him with that. And then he was gone. And I was like, he was doing this and, I was, and then he was gone. So frustrating and conditioning and working at the same time. But in the end, I still got him. So, I mean, yeah, everybody has a fight. Jorginho, I was asking earlier about building your team. And I guess where I was coming from wasn't so much the, the MMA team you have around you, but the kind of additional support people. Like, I don't know, are you getting like dietitians? Are you getting like social media managers? Are you getting um, agents and managers and business managers? Because I'm also new to America. I've only been here for like five or six years. And one thing I noticed is that when you start um, performing in America, whether it's martial arts or it's entertainment, suddenly there's a bunch of middlemen who start coming in. I don't know if you've experienced that and how you deal with it. Do you, do you, do you like vet the people with your friends or, I mean, can you talk about a bit about building your team in America? But it's not the you know necessarily the the people to tell you how to punch and 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 choke someone out. Yeah, the non-fight people. I think it's really necessary. I have a social media manager. Uh, I have a mentor. I have a, a nutritionist, and all those things. Yeah. I mean, and it keeps coming. It keeps coming. It keeps the coming people yeah. I mean, and I have a whole team about about wrestling, jujitsu, striking and boxing i mean it's a whole team but we have it all there in american top team so it makes it a little bit easier uh, you know and the championship rematch between Nganu and, and miocic uh the first fight between those guys was really interesting to to watch stipe who had so much more experience kind of know what to do to neutralize francis's punching power uh how do you see a second fight between them going um you know, with again, Stipe has already done that. Do you think he'll be able to do that again, or how do you see that going? No, nah, I don't know. I mean, Francis is a younger guy, also strong, big. Um, so not to forget and to mention um, Stipe's experience, but I think it's going to be a really interesting fight, and I'm going to be excited watching it. So you, you yeah, if you get this win, um, you know, they said Jones is getting the winner of uh, Miocic and Ngannou, but you'd like to be in a position to maybe fight, if not the next fight, then the fight after. Uh, you'd like to be in title contention if you win this fight in the next fight or two. For sure. I mean, after this fight, I'm, I'm looking for a quick turnaround. I want to fight at least one more. And yeah, get myself in the washing machine a little bit because it's, also, it's a long time that I didn't fight. For me, it's long, six, seven months. And um, now I'm going to fight again. So I'm going to look for a quick turnaround, even June or May. And when the title fights come, I will be ready and in shape for it. You know, I mean, uh, as a fan of, of the fighting, I, I would not object to, again, it's, you have to get through Cyril Ghosn first, obviously. I mean, but if you win this weekend, uh, you against Derek Lewis, I, I, I think uh, there's nobody that wouldn't enjoy that fight. Nah, I mean, Derek Lewis is a big, strong guy, of course. I don't, I don't know. We're going to see it. I yeah, think. I mean, that's, that's it's an interesting fun. fight. It is an interesting fight, but really yeah, interesting. yeah, really interesting. Oh. But, <clears throat> you know, let me ask you something. Enough of this MMA shit for one second. <laughs> let me ask you for the fans at home that like to get to know you one thing, a hobby, maybe a book you're reading, a Netflix series, maybe you like the bowl. What give me one thing unrelated to MMA you like to do? Besides the Simpsons, besides watching the Simpsons. Video game. Video games! <laughs> yeah! Video, I play a lot of video Just games. Like, I tell you. You play UFC 4? Of course I play UFC 4. I play UFC 4, I play FIFA, Mortal Kombat, Call of Duty. They are the most game I play every day. Like, almost every day. Can, can I oh, no, you Guys, go ahead, Ronnie. What was it? Oh, no, I was going to say, oh, man, your, your Mortal Kombat over Street Fighter? Oh, man. Listen, uh, no, I go for Mortal Kombat. I listen. What are you guys gonna bring up next? Donkey Kong. Let me spread <laughs> let me, let me the light here. This is what I want to bring up to bring the light. The Oculus Quest Two. Listen, Yarzino, this this thing is great. You ever played virtual reality? 
virtual reality. No. Oh my goodness! You go right to Best Buy. Send one of your send one of your uh, your your guys over there to Best Buy. Get the Oculus Quest Two, and you put the headset on, and oh, you're in a world. Forget yeah, about the yeah. PlayStation. You're in a world, and you're Merkin fools. I love that thing. Yeah, you got me to get one. I got one because of Matt. And I don't do the combat fight because I'm not good at it. I get dizzy. So I just stand there and I do I do boxing like a middle-aged lady. But I do enjoy it a lot. Uh, that's nice. I heard of it, but I never got it yet. But I'm going to look for it. Thanks for the well, Do you get motion sick? I, I get motion sick, so it got me a, a little bit queasy. You stop turning him off with the... Thing. I have to ask him. I don't want him getting pissed off at me. He buys it, he gets sick. <laughs> all of a sudden, I get punched in the head. He's getting. Uh, I don't get motion sick. I just... Nah. Oh, okay. Don't worry. You'll, you'll love it. <laughs> Jorginho, it's, it's, it's for those of us who um, our lives aren't as good as virtual reality. If your life is doing well, which you are, because you're, you're on a hot roll right now, you don't need virtual reality, man. <laughs> reality is good enough for you. Well, we agree to disagree, but <laughs> it's okay. All right, Jimmy. Well, look, good luck. Uh, you know, we, we uh, love watching you fight, and I was really happy for you against uh, Junior. I thought that was a really, really good fight. Um, and uh, you know you you got the uh, you know the 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 L is out of the way now, and you and you got a very tough uh, guy ahead of you, and something and so does he. Uh, he's got to deal with you. So uh, we'll talk to you on the other side of it, man. Have a great fight on Saturday, and um, either, either way, we're looking forward to talking again. Yeah, great comeback you. win. Thank you, thank you, and yeah, for sure this Saturday is gonna be fireworks. Amen. <laughs> yes, I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait. All right, we talk after. Where, where, can you wear Simpsons to your next weigh in? By the way, one more time. Wear the Simpsons shirt or wear something Simpsons to the next <laughs> weigh-in. Maybe you'll get some sponsorship. Yes, you don't allow it. Or they won't oh. let you do it. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll put yeah. it in the future. I don't want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. Good talking right. to you. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Thank all right. You guys have a great day. Be Bye. Good. Bye. It's, it's so interesting because I don't get to talk to athletes very often uh, other than retired ones. But um, they, it, you talk to them and they're like, oh, yeah, we like video games. Oh, you, you know, we like The Simpsons. And then you watch what they do for a living and you're always like, damn. Yeah. People. yeah. Well, they're human beings. What do you think? What do you think they're doing <laughs> in the, uh, when they're not on it? They just got a raw bone and a dog. That, ah, with a a spike knows. collar on. Fuck, you just. Ah. <laughs> no, man. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's cool to see. It's good to good to good, good to get their personalities out and see what what they're about. But I I didn't know if I was going to put him on the spot because I wanted to ask him what his thoughts were on the whole, uh, you know, Usman Khabib not wanting to fight each other thing. It's you know, I, 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 because they're on the same team. I don't know if he, I don't know if it, it, it puts him in the headlines for the wrong reasons if he say comes out either way. Oh. Or position, you know? Did have Us, you know? Usman and Khabib been talked about? I mean, that's a tough fight for Khabib. I know I know that he's. So uh, dangerous, but I mean, to go up and wait. Isn't he retired? Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather see him fight. There's a lot of people I'd rather see him fight uh, Oliveira. I'd much rather see him fight well, Oliveira than Usman. Well, well, I mean, if his thing, again, I don't, obviously, I don't know any of the people involved personally, but if publicly Khabib is saying that he needs a challenge, right? He's not saying that, he, he, his, his whole thing is, I want to fight someone worthy of fighting. Right, he's at the point now where he feels his legacy is cemented. He's the champ. Literally, he is the champ right now. So, if he wants to challenge, I feel like it would be a weight class shift, right? I mean, maybe if that's your if that's your goal is a, a fight challenge. That's you know, but you're right. His frame, his frame isn't re maybe his frame isn't the right frame for that kind of you know why fight at such a disadvantage. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question. What would he do? to consider a, a challenge. And it's also got to be a big enough name. I mean, let's be honest. He's already dealt with, with the Connor and the amount of money that he can make from doing that. And Justin Gaethje, uh, I'm looking over at, at the, uh, the lightweights. I mean, if he wants a challenge, I mean, he, again, they've, he's never fought Ferguson, no fault of his own. It just happened. And uh, Charles Oliveira, I think would be a great fight for him or Michael Chandler who maybe needs one more fight before a shot at the belt. What do you think, Matt? Michael Chandler would probably have to get through one more person, even though it was devastating what he did to Dan Hooker, but yeah. Hooker was number six. And I don't mean, I don't say that dismissively, but you know what I mean? Yeah, stylistically, it would be the fight that you expected with Habib versus Justin Gaethje. 
Like, in other words, nobody thought he'd take him down and control him the way he did. It's like, you know, with Justin. No, they thought the, that his uh, wrestling would just negate that. You know what I mean? He would just take it away. But, like, you, I've seen uh, Michael Chandler in such crazy scrambles in, 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 in practice that that's the fight and in fights where – that's where is he going to be able to be held down? Like that's what you would think of. And he's obviously explosive standing up. So that would be a fantastic fight. But then you also look at Oliveira where, you know, he's one of the most dangerous guys off his yeah. mat. He's got that pinpoint jujitsu. When the submission's on, it's on. So, it, you know, it could just put somebody to sleep, break an arm, whatever it is. So that's also intriguing. So, you know, there's a lot of things you could make as a fan but it's all about the mentality of Habib if he even wants to step back in the cage. Because if he does, because he's not stepping back in there for the wrong reasons. He's not doing it for more Benjamins. He's, you know, unless his exactly. mom, you know, unless he just, I don't know, unless he literally gets motivated to want to maul somebody again. Which, I mean, if it's between those two guys, I mean, Poya made the point in publicly in press conferences that all of, even Poya said Oliveira should be the guy because he's the next. He's, he's yeah. done enough, so to speak, to do it, you know. So it, it's interesting, the fight game, like how, you know, like uh, Chandler coming in and having one good fight. And it, it is one good fight, but the shine is there, right? Even yeah. though, and everyone's saying, like, oh, he hasn't fought enough in the UFC, which he hasn't. And, but the shine is there. The allure of that fight is there just from that one, that one punch, right? That one yeah. first round. Right. Against the guy who was so respected too, like again, even though Dan Hooker was ranked uh, n- number six, which is still top ten, I mean, he's really a tough guy, and, and I don't think anybody expected that to happen to him. So yeah, you're right. He's got the uh, the shine. Certain guys just come in and do it. I mean, Gaethje against uh, oh god, Michael Johnson, I think was his first fight in the UFC. He came in as like this uh, fifteen or fourteen and no guy from another um, another uh, promotion company. And, and he was he was amazing. And some guys like Ben Askren come in and have a tough time. Yeah. So, um, and, and yeah. what I love about what I love about those guys is like they kind of if if you are a pro fighter and you had one or two maybe three losses on your on your thing and you know I, I feel like those guys prove that you can overcome that or you can overcome that journeyman gatekeeper role. Right. You know what I mean? If you if you just keep you know like I don't know if you keep fighting people and winning. I mean, mm-hmm. which sounds obvious, but you know I'm talking about that shine, that kind of that weird that 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 uh, uh, intangible thing that makes fighters yeah. you, you want to see a fight from these guys right and you you know you lose that shine when you when you have a few too many losses and it's it's nice to see that you can you know you can overcome that basically like your career is not over just because you've got you, you can come back you can be champ you can be well respected you know it it's like when they got that shine they got that glow like the last dragon <laughs> when you got that glow, uh, and he's doing, he's doing like the. All of a sudden, you see the glow around the last dragon. Did you guys see the last dragon? Well, that movie is that with Nicholas Cage? Show enough. Do you know there's like five movies called The Last Dragon? I don't know which one you. you there's like. I'm talking about the last dragon, Ronnie. Get your shit together. Listen, it's from the '80s. You have Google near you. Google it, and let's see how many last dragons come up. I would have oh thought God. it was from the '70s. <laughs> Well, listen, I would I would have thought it was I, my father brought me to that movie theater as a kid and this story about this kung fu artist that 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 was looking for the glow he needed to get that extra uh that, that he couldn't achieve the next level but it was always yeah. within him I don't want to give nothing away right. but I want you to watch it I don't give out homework assignments but I'm talking to the unfiltered army because they like when I suggest movies. Well, if you we, Google The Last Dragon, there's going to be like a hundred different matches. Yeah. So good I'm luck do it right to now. It out. We have our guest. Now. We have our next guest here too. If you if you want to bring her in, well, now you, now I want to see if she's seen The Last Dragon. Well, let's see if she has. Um, um, let's let's bring her in. Hello, Montana. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Very and well, and I'm I guess sorry, you're. Jimmy, uh, just for the record, I don't oh, want to. Yes. How are you, by the way? Nice to meet you, Montana. I'm great. Nice uh, to meet you, Ronnie, our friend Ronnie. But yeah. I just did you ever see the movie The Last Dragon? Not to start this off weird. Uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, listen, you're, you're very young. I'm really <laughs> but just so I just Ronnie, just so you know, I googled it, and it's all over that shit. Excuse me, my, my language. Look at that, The Last Dragon. Okay. What I talked about, Ronnie. So I don't okay, want to. Okay, Matt. 
Thank you. Thank you for teaching me about <laughs> Thank you for teaching me about your 1980s pop culture. It's very relevant right now. <laughs> We're going to learn. All right, let's start the interview right now, okay? <laughs> hey, Montana, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. I'm really good because I've never seen The Last Dragon. Oh, shit. We're right back to that. I apologize. <laughs> So now, right, right now, are you, uh, are you in quarantine right now, or is that over for you? Um, pretty much the whole time we're here, we're in quarantine. I think we're not even allowed to go like eat or anything. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the bubble. The bubble can't get burst. <laughs> right. Oh, you're in, okay. So now, have you been over to uh, Fight Island? I have not. No. Okay, because yeah, I, I imagine over there it's it's kind of the same thing. Um, Matt, you would know the difference. Uh, More the quarantining. So listen, uh, you know, but it's good. Listen, you're not in Vegas to party. You know that you're there for handling business. It might be a good thing. That yeah, got- I'm used to it. I usually don't go do much besides maybe go to dinner, but that's about it. So it's normal. That is normal. I got business to take care of. So. Yeah. Well, uh, do you, I mean, does it help you to get away? Sorry, I'm sorry, Roddy. Does it help you to go out and, and like do something to clear your head a little bit? Or how do you keep yourself ready before a fight? Does it help to distract or do you like to think about it? Um, A little of both. I think my coaches help me to distract, kind of get me laughing and just get my mind off of the actual fight. And then when it's time to dial in, which is just a short period of time, they're able to help me refocus. So just kind of reading books and, just focusing on myself, meditating, all that. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, oh, you have the, do you have I'm the, sorry, do you have the mad set up? Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. I don't know. I was just asking if she's reading like books on like serial killers or no, people get into, Hey, I remember Frank Shamrock used to do that back in the day, read serial killer books to get ready for a fight. What books? <laughs> That's fucking weird. I guess to get into that mentality, are you reading books to escape? Are they like, uh, no, I'm right now I'm reading the champion's mind. So that's pretty good. Yeah, just stuff like that. Oh, that's some Tony Robbins stuff. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Mind. You have the mat set up in your hotel room to train and... Uh, yeah, so we get a hotel room like right next door that has the mat and all that. So we've been over there a couple times already. Oh, you get two rooms, one just to kind of live in and then one to go and... Uh... Yeah, exactly. Do you Do you have... I'm fascinated by these things. Do you have the portable in room sauna. little sauna do you have one of those oh yeah yeah oh. that's much needed <laughs> how do you clean them after because i heard dc talking cormier was talking about borrowing someone's and i'm like who would loan somebody their, their little sweat box like who would want to loan a person that how do you clean that <laughs> um you take you actually take it off like there's this cover around it and you throw it in the wash but i mean the ufc does all that here it's actually their sauna so i have one back home too you do. And it does actually work. Is it really effective? It does actually. Oh, help? yeah. Yeah. It's really effective and it takes up a little bit of space. It's perfect for what for what you need it for to sweat. <laughs> Man, we're not there to clean saunas. You're there to kick ass. Montana, <laughs> let me ask you, where did you grow up and what discipline did you start with? Uh, so I grew up in a small town called Azel, Texas. Um, I was born in Helena, Montana. But I started with wrestling. Well, I did a bunch of different sports when I was younger. My dad was always throwing me into different sports. Um, and then I got into wrestling in high school. And then I was going to go wrestle in college, but I had a daughter when I was 15 years old and I wasn't able to like leave. And yeah, I just, I didn't want to leave my family and everything. So I stayed there and found an MMA gym and started training and just got right into professionally fighting. Wow, 15 is very, so is, is that something like, cause you hear but you certain times people have uh, kids really young and then as, as their kid grows up, it's like you kind of become a friend too. It's like, it actually, I've, I've heard that always like is a pretty good parent uh, child relationship when you're kind of close like that. Exactly, she's already like my best friend. She's much older than her years. Um, she's so smart. I mean, she's a wrestler too. So we're kind of always just training and going to different practices. And she, yeah, she's definitely my best friend. Wow. How old is she now? She's just turned 10. Oh, okay. And now does yeah. she want to pursue fighting because you do it? And would you encourage her to do it? Uh, I don't think 
she wants to, and I don't think I'd want her to either. It's a hard life for sure. Uh, she wants to go to the Olympics for wrestling. So I think she can do that. Oh, really? Yeah. No way she don't got to get punched, Jimmy. Yeah. As a parent, that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's what you're thinking of Montana. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just rough. I mean, you know, <laughs> the whole lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, Montana, I've been lucky to kind of train jujitsu in, in Texas and in Dallas and Houston and um, uh, dro just dropping into schools when I'm traveling for work. And I feel like, and, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I just feel like there's some uh, affinity that Texans have with jujitsu. I don't know, something, it like speaks to a lot of people there when, I, when, when like, it's, it's really funny as someone who, you know, look, I mean, jujitsu. Uh, I should let you answer before I keep talking. But I mean, do you feel that there is an affinity there, uh, you know, with Texans and just that 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 grappling, specifically jujitsu art? Oh yeah, grappling, like wrestling and jujitsu. They just love it there. Um, my gym is really good at making everyone feel like wel welcoming. Like I feel like a lot of the other gyms, like up north and stuff, they're not as welcoming. They they don't want you to come in and and train with them but like my gym back home like we would let anybody come for free and just just roll with us for open mat or whatever well, right, right i don't obviously you never visited sarah bjj in huntington long island I don't <laughs> no i haven't <laughs> is that an invitation <laughs> that's an invitation because we're very welcoming okay you know ronnie's got me wanting to yell yeah with all the, <laughs> the texans like the yeah texans. <laughs> there's, there's there's something about that texas like um uh, uh, hospitality and, and right. politeness plus plus exactly. that undertone of don't mess with us that I think really gels really well with jujitsu because jujitsu is a I found in my experience that all these schools I go to a very welcoming place as well and they're ready to take your head off on on the mat you know and I don't know there's something about and and for me I'm not Japanese but as an Asian person um kind of it it's I don't know. I just I I I feel really happy seeing all these like Texas American guys putting on the gi, bowing, talking about you know uh, using Japanese names with, with the moves. Um, I don't know. It just it just feels like a nice um, blending of culture. Yeah, that's awesome. You hit it right on the button. It explains Texan Jiu Jitsu for for sure. And, and you're you're uh, married to a fighter to to Mark, uh, and you guys were on the same card. I mean, I'm telling you who you're married to. That was very helpful of you. <laughs> um, but you guys were on the same card. How was I, I would that add pressure and make it harder to first of all, I don't remember who fought first. And how were you able to concentrate on your fight when you're watching your spouse fight? Yeah. So usually we're in each other's corners, but for that one, I was like, he fought first. So I was like, I kind of gotta stay back and just get my mind right so I can go out and perform because it's really stressful. Like even watching your your spouse fight, like you get so much nerves. And I think I would have been a nervous wreck if I was actually there by the cage. <laughs> so I was able to stay in the hotel and just relax and then head up there and kind of get my mind refocused uh, for my fight. Now, did you, so did you guys had probably wanted to do it at least once just to do it. Um, once you did it, were you like, oof, I, I didn't enjoy that. Or was it better than you thought it would be? Um, it wasn't too bad. And I, I would probably do it again. I don't know if he would or not. Um, we've actually fought on the same card before for our pro debuts together. So we were kind of used to it. It wasn't anything too new. Oh, and you were a couple, obviously it wouldn't have mattered if you weren't a couple who would have cared, you know, the fact yeah, that you were a couple. yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I always wondered how that would be like being, uh, with somebody who's in the exact same line of work, if it becomes harder, if you guys, kind of bump heads a little bit because your schedules or is it what you prefer? Um, we kind of do everything together. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of why I went to Colorado for this camp is just to kind of get out of my comfort zone and be able to train under um, some new coaches and just, just get my mind right. How'd that uh, do for your cardio training in Colorado? I think it did very well. <laughs> Uh, it should be good this Saturday. Should be did good it, to go. Did it take a little bit of time to get used? I mean, I've literally walked up a hill in Aspen and wanted to collapse. Like, uh, so it takes getting some getting used to. Oh yeah, my first sparring session, I was just like exhausted. Like you're thirsty, you feel like you're drowning. Like it's rough, but I got I got used to it after a couple of weeks. So I think that'll help me tremendously. 
So I, I think there's some, some fighters, like when they start up fighting, they don't really, um, how, how, how open were you to like using science to like inform your camp in terms of diet and, and um, um, you know, tracking fitness? Um, I really don't use it too much. Uh, right. So you're one of those kinda like, Yeah, I just kind of like grind, go, go, go. Um, I kind of leave that up to my coaches and um, yeah, just my coaches help me with that. Doing the right thing, Montana. I think Thank Ronnie you. watches some videos of guys running on a treadmill with a fucking snorkel and he's like, oh, Montana, do <laughs> right. that. Put like a they didn't have that back in the day. <laughs> heavy for you. Listen, at the end of the day, you run some hills, spar and get your jujitsu in and you're fighting in a cage. Calm down. Exactly. Yeah. They're trying to put way too much science into it. <laughs> exactly. You do oh, see you, that you, though. You, you do prefer the you prefer the Rocky montage versus the, <laughs> the Rocky a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do see that though. Like guys running with those uh things on and I and I guess that is for uh does that is that what to regulate their oxygen? I guess that is to give them a little bit less. Is that what what people do that for? Uh I'm sure I'm sure Ronnie would know more about that. <laughs> the masks. Yeah. They're trying to take in less oxygen as they're they're, yeah. they're, you know, exerting a lot of energy and whatever. I'm a bad breather. So I look at that and I get uncomfortable. Like I have very bad, not that you needed to know this, we're promoting your fight, but I just wanted to segue into a, a moment about my sinuses and they're very bad. So whenever I see that, I really, uh, I get panic stricken when I, if I can see those things. Montana, it's, it's, for, it's for people <laughs> like me who can't fight and I look and I, I just keep trying to look for scientific solutions. To try yeah. to, myself better. <laughs> to find advantages. <laughs> yeah, yes. to find advantages. Yeah. Now, Montana, uh, you said you were reading that book. What are you and your husband? You guys watching anything like a series? I just got I'm, I just got done with the first season of. It took me a little bit. I had to dive back in. It was like a fight, and then I really got into it. I got done with the first season of Peaky Blinders, and I'm like, oh, that's it. exactly what I'm watching. No, I can. <laughs> yes, I, it's so yeah. good. Now I'm in. I'm in. It now. is. It's really good. You guys There's a lot, watching? but it's, it's good. good. <laughs> yeah, it, it keeps getting better. It's good. Oh, what what season are you on? If you don't mind me asking. We finished it. We're waiting oh. for the next season. How many seasons? Oh, it's still going. How many seasons are there? There's a lot. I think there's like six, maybe. I'm, I started my journey. I got pissed. The, it took me a little bit. I don't know. It's hard that. to get into it first. Yeah. It took me a little bit to get into it. Yeah. Now, exactly. now I'm all in. Oh, I'm, for sure. I'm it. <laughs> I like that. I like that Matt said, if you don't mind me asking this, fun, like, it would be funny if you said, what season are you on? And you went, whoa, that's a little private. I would rather. <laughs> <laughs> it's none of your business. Yeah, hey, whoa, but, easy, buddy. <laughs> Montana, have you, been, have you been to England? No, I want to go. We, ha we know some people that live up there. Um, I would love to make, make the journey up there one day. Cool. Peaky Blinders would be your intro to. That's what London's like, by the way. I've been Is there it really? Times. Yeah, it's just gang warfare. <laughs> really? It's that yeah. rough? <laughs> Dang. Well, it, does it take place? I saw like, I don't remember. I think I saw like the first episode. And you're right. It takes a little bit to get into. Is it like from the 20s or the 30s? When is it supposed to be happening? Or is it not modern? I don't remember. Not modern. It's it's, it's not, yeah. right? Oh, it's, it's, it's back. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember why I didn't get into it. Maybe I'll give it another. Uh, Matt, Matt thought it was the 80s in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the accents seem weird to me. <laughs> I'm not Uncle Sam's. What, what, what club is that? <laughs> it's too funny. And uh, by the way, we're, you're fighting uh, Myra Bueno. So, of course, uh, we have to mention that on. Uh, I, yeah. We didn't really mention the fight. We we're just talking about. It. What were we talking when you came in? Like some movie. Oh, yeah. Enter the last dragon. The last dragon, which you should all watch. I'm going right. to watch that with my kids. I'm going to tell my wife because we look for new stuff to watch. I'm telling you, it's great. Okay. I'll watch it. <laughs> and uh, did somebody in your uh, corner test positive for COVID at one point? Uh, not long ago, right? Yeah, it was actually my husband. Uh, oh, it was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he tested positive and they were trying to reschedule it. But I was like, I'm probably going to get it. And I ended up getting it two weeks later. So I was like, good thing we didn't reschedule that right away. How bad was it? Any symptoms or? Uh, he had a fever and just kind of lethargic and I just had like a headache. I was able to run and everything like I, it didn't affect me too much. I just had like a light headache and a backache. I felt like I just worked out too hard. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, you got like a mild, uh, what you mean it feels like actually. 
not not the whole workout thing, no. But I I know that I've gotten back aches, oh, and I yeah. cause someone said that's what it feels like to work out. I'm like, ah, oh. like, believe it or not, I don't work out. This is natural. I, I know. <laughs> no way. <laughs> this this gift is no way. <laughs> Show us your six pack. <laughs> so so, so how could... long? Oh, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> No, no, I was, uh, no, I was going to bring it back to something more serious. I was going to just say, how long did it take to get a negative test? Two weeks? One week? Uh, I, this was my first test when I got back, uh, when we no. came to Vegas. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I actually have no idea how long it took okay. me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I haven't been tested in a while. I'm hoping I'm, I don't have it, but, uh, if I do, I'm not feeling any effects, but, uh, yeah, if you finally, like, who is it? Uh, Shemaev is, uh, uh, ha having like lingering effects. Some guys, it, it, it's crazy. Right. Some people get it, and then he just he canceled the Leon Edwards fight because he's having some a uh, uh, lingering effect. So some some people just don't have it as easy. Yeah, it's just crazy how it affects people so differently. It's right. So well, I'm glad you're healthy and, and you and you're uh, you're ready to fight. Uh, this should be a great fight on Saturday. You're on an interesting card too, Cyril Gon and uh, Rosenstrike. That's really that wasn't supposed to be the main event. I don't think it got bumped up about a month ago. And uh, they both agreed to five rounds. So have a great fight. Uh, and thank you for coming on the show. It was fun talking to you. And uh, we'd love to have you back on if you if you ever want to come on and talk movies or anything <laughs> but MMA, because apparently we don't talk MMA. We just talk movies. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I like it. Well, it was fun Perfect. talking to you, Montana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank All right. You, Montana. Montana. Great. Thank you. Eaky blinders, motherfuckers. Yeah. I'm okay. digging it. I'm in. I'm fucking in. You know what I mean? I'm digging it. I'm enjoying that show. Do, do, you, do you like do you like England as much as you like Peaky Blinders? No, nah, I don't I'm not even well, I'll tell you where they were great to me. It's it was uh in Manchester. They are so great over there. Oh, they what great fans. Oh my goodness, they were always so they're so sweet. I was there anytime I was there. What's the matter? No, I'm just laughing because. The places who love you are like the like a little rough. They're a little rough. The places that you're like shouting out are like rough places. It's just funny. Like, yeah, I went to you know, I went to Iraq. It was super nice to me. Like, it, 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 like, <laughs> it was, well, I'm talking about the Australian fans are yeah. fucking sweethearts. I like that. Okay, they're sweethearts to you. They're a little uh, those guys are a little rough. Is what I'm trying to say. Well, Ronnie, I'm thinking maybe your your little uh, silver tongue there got yourself in some trouble. <laughs> I think maybe you were sweet talking somebody at the bar or something. And these Aussies were like, "Listen, Mister Stand Up Comedian, get the fuck out of here." No, no, I, I tell you what, you you do appeal to the Gold Coast Australian crowd and the Manchester England crowd for sure. Very tough people. That. Matt does do well in tough environments. Like, you know what I mean? You know, Mogadishu, they show. They were very nice. You know, places yeah. that are very scary. They they love Matt. Because you know why? Because Matt's, yeah. Matt's a guy, like a, a, a guy who's, there's no pretense about Matt. There's no bullshit. So yes, I agree. Like and that. that's why that show, that UFC show, uh, Looking for a Fight, works so well with oh, Matt. People yeah. connect with you. People connect with you real well because, yeah, you're, you're the guy who, people can feel your sincerity. And they also can feel your good intention. Now you, so, make, now you make me blush, but only you could feel my sticky. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. Little wing yeah, chun action. Let me ask you, Ronnie. We talked about it a little bit before. Your first day trying a jujitsu class, because I did not talk to you before you really tried it. You did. You no, were, no. You know, we played around with the wing chun and this and that. Yeah. Uh, your first day on the mat, did you fall in love with it instantly, or was it like, yo, this is so weird, and there's a guy on top of me and. Tell me. No, I fell in love with it. I, I fell in love with the, uh, uh, you know, p the pursuit of perfection in technique and knowing that you're never going to get there. I fell in love with the competition. I fell in love with the working out, the endorphins, the, you know, I think, I, and I really want, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I, there's no one who will talk jujitsu with me. I'm, I'm like a crazy, my wife is like, shut up about jujitsu. No one, I, that's why I'm so, I, that's why I love talking to you guys about it. You know, I talk to, uh, I talk the ears out of every comic. They'll, every, everyone's like, shut up about jujitsu, Ron. You're sounding like a goddamn cult member. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm, uh, be, because I, I think if, if nothing else, like put aside the effectiveness talk of martial arts or whatever, the fact that you can go so hard in sparring in jujitsu and be relatively under control and not, you know, have to get knocked out during sparring. I think it really uh, al allows you to work out a lot of your 
emotions and also let you train technique, you know, uncooperative training at a very high level. I think it's really what made jujitsu spread so much in America. The uncooperative sparring is really, you yeah. know, what it, it, it's one of the few arts where you, you're allowed to do that. How soon into your training? Because I don't like guys roll live and unless they have a wrestling background and I could kind of let them know their objectives. I, I don't let them, I even let them start from their knees yet because there's going to be a lot of areas they don't know what they're doing. So when I have a, like when a guy starts out two weeks, I don't let them roll live. After that, I let them start from specific positions. All right, today we're escaping the mount. One person is keeping the mount, looking to finish, keeping them in. The other person is just escaping. And then they have a clear cut goal what to do. Just like passing the guard I was doing with my, my beginners the other day. All right, your objective on top is to get past these legs, secure a dominant position, side control. Yeah. Now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. and then the person on the bottom, not letting them. So it gives them clear cut goals of what they should be achieving. So then when they actually go from the knees or the feet, they're used to all the different positions. Okay, he's cross side. Oh, I remember cross side. I have, I have this way to get out, that way to get out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Your first day rolling, did you start from positional training or was it just, did you feel like- Yeah, well, well, um, first first day train, well, uh, that, that's the thing, you know, we're all UFC fans. And so, like, I, I knew all this, like, you know, positional stuff, yeah. just academically, obviously, no, no, no actual practical skill. So the I, idea of, like, being in side control, being in, oh, this is an amba, obviously zero knowledge of actually how to execute, but just the idea of, like, oh, side control, if you're under- Someone in cycle is bad. If your 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 goal should be positional control, whether it's you know side control or, or, or full mount. So I kind of knew the game a little bit, but not enough to actually do anything. And because I have respect for the game, and I, so my approach to jitsu was like, whatever the basics are, I just want to learn the fun fundamentals. I'm not here to I'm not here to prove anything. I'm not here to fight on the street. I'm just here to get a workout. You know, what, learn yeah. learn technique, have fun, and so. My approach was very much um, uh, basic. You don't want me to roll? No problem. You want me to do this drill? You want me to do tumble rolls and learn how to fall? No problem. Any, yeah. you know, start from the ground up. I think when you come from an martial shot, you kind of understand or oh, you need to work some fundamentals. Um, I think with jujitsu, there is an element of like, um, uh, 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 like uh, when you first start out, you, you maybe there's a bit of wanting to, wanting to know for yourself that jujitsu works. And so you go pretty hard because you, you know, you, you want to like learn for yourself. Like, Hey, does this martial art actually work? If, if I'm, if I'm me, Ronnie Chan, if I go full strength on this guy who knows technique, can he stop me? And so you do that a little bit, right. Just to see whether or not. Yes. The martial arts. But after that, you kind of quickly learn the etiquette is, yo, just learn some technique, man. You don't have to go a hundred percent all the time. Also, you don't know what you're doing. You're probably going to hurt someone. So just, you know, calm down a bit. And that's kind of, you know, the natural evolution, I think of, of starting jujitsu for the first time is and that's also i think why i get it why people don't want their students to roll the first two weeks because it's just like comedy jim you, you get cycles coming off the street you don't know who this guy is you know right. you're putting them you're, you're, you're getting them in you're putting your other students in compromising positions with essentially unknown stranger cycles you want two weeks to kind of feel them out make sure they're not crazy people make sure they're respectful mm -hmm. make sure they know what they're doing and also yeah. guys that who probably think they can fight better than they can who are going to yeah. try too hard and wind up getting themselves hurt Guy, yeah. guys that are just going to come in as aggressive dickheads. And then, and then, you know, somebody's going to strangle them on the floor. Let me ask you something as comedians. Cause I wanted to ask you before, but I didn't want to take away from Montana. She was my, first of all, she was great. Montana. Very nice person. Yeah. I liked great. her a lot. Yeah. She had a good time with us. Yeah. Well, so. We were talking about Montana and her husband, Mark, and if they ever, you know, how they felt with competing on the same night, both you guys, did you ever date a comic and did you guys ever go on at the same night where she killed or whatever? And then you didn't work out so well for you. Anything like this or no? I have. Yeah. yeah dated one comedian many, many years ago. Um, I, I'm sure we went on the same night a couple of times here and there. I'm, I'm sure we did that. Um, and I remember I would be uncomfortable watching her because I would get too defensive if somebody in the crowd was shitty. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. was like, that's my girlfriend. I would get very annoyed yeah. at people in the crowd. Um, so I couldn't really watch because I, I, I would want to fucking throw something at somebody for heckling. And it's like, well, that's the job. Yeah. She can handle it. Uh, I never, I never dated someone um, who did comedy, but um, that it, you know, it always feels like grass is always greener because 
when you don't date someone in comedy, you feel like, oh, if I dated someone in comedy, they will be the one person who gets what I do. They'd understand, right? yeah. They understand the they understand the hours. They understand why I'm why I'm running around sitting the town. They understand my pressures, why I'm stressed about this joke. You know, they get it. And then what if you are I mean Jim Kermit if I'm wrong, when you are dating them, uh dating another comic, the grass is always greener again. You feel like, ah, I wish we dated I wish I had someone who could tell me objectively that this doesn't matter or that, you know, that uh right. like someone outside the industry so we're not you know competing in the same field or whatever so i don't know matt i think i think it's grass is green i think people make it work, work both ways right like yeah um, or i wish i was alone on the road so i could cheat like the little yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah. but uh very successful comedians have have married other comics and um it it, it i mean uh, man it, it works well so i guess it's really up to the individual yeah, okay I, I am very interested in Montana's situation, though. I, I, like, literally, that family business is fighting. By the way, Ronnie, before we go, because our episode is over, where are you? Oh, uh, so uh, I'm in Hawaii right now. You are in Hawaii. Yeah, best place in America to be right now. You know, what what there. time is it there right now? Uh, right now, it's I woke up at 7.45 a.m. Oh. for this podcast. And you guys Thank you. Late, so thanks a lot, guys. Oh, man. Uh, what? We were late? Well, I, don't know. I, I, I was, uh, yeah, it, it, this podcast for me started at 7.45 a.m. And uh, I don't do podcasts and I, I, I hate waking up early, but for you guys, I was like, yeah, for sure. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. I hate waking I do radio in the morning. I hate every day. I love the gig, but I hate getting up. Um, but yeah, come back yeah. anytime, man. It, I, I love you. I, I, anytime you want to come on, we love having you on. I want him to make a prediction, though. I want yes. him to predict who is going to win between uh, Rosie Strike and Gaines. Rosenstrike and Gaines. Uh, man, I, I'm going to go with... Uh, man, is I'm going to go... Gaines undefeated. Yes, he is 7-0. Yeah. I, I, man, just I mean, just for that alone, I, I feel like the momentum's with Gaines. You know, if you if you make me pick, I, I, I pick Gaines. I mean, they're both good fighters. That one's a hard one. Cyril go gone, yes. Cyril gone and uh, Rosenstrike. Yeah, I, I, I just go with uh, the guy on a on a hot streak, you know. If if, if just just because, but I I got no other information to go on. It's it's very it, it's it's very close fight. I am probably I'll be honest, man. I'm probably going to go. Cyril gone with a second round stoppage, and here's my thinking. I love Rosen Strike, um, but I did think that. Uh, I mean, Ngannou was a tough fight. You can't tell a whole lot. Anybody gets caught by Ngannou can have a problem. He fought very well against Junior. But if you looked at the fight before Ngannou, the um, Alistair Overeem fight, I believe Overeem was, that was a, almost a 50-45 fight, if I remember correctly. It might have been 49-46, uh, I don't remember. And then he, he clocked him at the end. But that was a very dominant fight by Alistair Overeem. Um, so I, I am going to go with Gan in the second round. Listen to me. I know what you guys are saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. The whole thing with God, he never tasted defeat. Well, you know who tasted defeat and doesn't like the way defeat tastes? The guy with the strike. Okay. And he doesn't like the way those fucking tootsies face taste. He's, <laughs> he's not having it again. He's okay. not having a second helping of a fucking, you know what I mean, of a beating. It's not happening. Okay. Not up in here, Ronnie. I'm okay. sorry. Ronnie, you came on early on the show. Um, you got up yeah. early for this. I don't want. That's I'm, okay. I don't. No, want, it's okay. This, this is what I got up early for. This is what but I Matt Sarah experience. I, I feel like, I don't know if it was that Simpson shirt, or <laughs> sparkle in his eye. I feel like I bonded with that man, and I am backing up Roger Strode to strike, and I feel that the experience. He has. He's he been in there like, look, that battle with Overeem. He still stayed focused throughout. Yeah, that's you true. Could, you could say, all right, early stoppage. Maybe they shouldn't have stopped it. Or maybe if they would have let it go into the ref, whatever. He still rearranged his face. And I love him. He over. did. Yeah. And he I'm did it there. at the very end. So he never lost focus. That tells me a lot. He came back from this loss, beat a former champion. That tells me a lot. I'm going with Roger Strike. And I'm going to go with fourth round stoppage. I said Okay. It. All right. All right. I didn't mean to make that a big fucking scene. No, I mean, look, you might be right. I mean, uh, Rosenstock certainly yeah. has the power to stop anybody in the division. I wouldn't you love to see him and Derek Lewis too? Like, that's a good fight too, man. Him, him and Lewis are a great fight because Jones gets the winner. Jones gets the winner of Ngannou Stipe. Um, but and but then who fights the winner of that? 
this is the other thrill for me is getting to go on this podcast and actually meeting the fighters. And now I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'll, I'll cheer for them. He said, oh. he, said, he said hi to me. Yeah, that guy, I want that guy to win now. What a nice but it's talk. hard, it's Ronnie. What's hard is when you talk, like we had Ciro Gan on and he's a really nice guy. And then we have Rosenstrike and he's a really nice guy. So I, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I'll, 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 I'll pick somebody, but as a, it's, it's hard to even like root for anybody because they're both really nice guys. So I'll watch yeah. it and I'll like, fuck, I like both of these guys. I just want it to be a good fight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I forgot to give a shout out as well. I mean, how about uh, Andre Avlowski? Still in the game. Yeah. Let's, let, yeah, it was cool to see him. It was like, I don't know. It was like a, a very nostalgic moment to see him on the card. I mean, he didn't have a, he didn't have a result, but it was cool to see, it, see him back on. And he was yeah. doing well lately, and I'd always pick against him. Sure. So this, I, think I, I think I just, fuck, I gave him the old voodoo. You jinxed one. him. Yeah, you jinxed him a little bit. Yeah. No. yeah but he, well, seeing Avlowski fight is like watching Grey's Anatomy now because it's like, the, the show's been on for so long. You have this connection to this time of like, Oh yeah, I remember in college watching Andre Vlad, it was crazy. Yeah. It was, yeah. Just seeing I, the I, ring. I, I, it is like that. I prefer George Clooney in Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> yeah. I prefer yeah. him in the Golden Girls. <laughs> I prefer oh, yeah. him in Facts of Life. You want to fucking play the age game? Wait, he was in the Facts of Life? Well, you can look it up or you can take my word for it. No, I'm gonna he look it up. He's also in fucking Rotten Tomatoes or the Killer Tomatoes movie. Hold on oh, yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead, IBM or whatever the fuck you call that thing. <laughs> Facts. Uh, well, I don't know about you, but I'm a I'm 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 a, a Blair guy from way back, and I'm also a 2D fan. You're more of a Natalie lover. Hold hey. on one sec. Yeah, hold on, Matt. But Please. Natalie Slayer. <laughs> now, let's see. Wait, wait, is he in this? Ronnie, I'm so happy you came on, Ronnie. I love your energy. Uh -huh. George Burnett. You're correct, Matt. Oh, during season seven and eight. Ah, we don't remember those. What? Uh, Matt, we don't remember. Ah, Tootie was still on the roller skates. All right, Matt. All right, Matt. For the amount of punches you've taken to the face and still being able to recall, you know, ch childhood TV, it's very impressive. Oh, I, I know. I remember a lot of things. Several ways how to strangle people, even small. <laughs> Ronnie, I can't wait to see you again. Listen, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to roll. fucking around. But listen, Ronnie, if you're ever, I don't know where your comedy takes you. I'm sure all over. If you're ever in Long Island, New York, I mean, Matt, Matt, I live in New York. Oh, what the fuck am I talking about then? Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I'm used to my other friend in New York who I never see. I know. Do you ever come home? Yeah. I'll, I'll, no, Matt, I'm looking forward to I'm I'm glad we have a new a new um a, a new way of having a discussion, which is through sparring. So I'm, I'm looking forward to learning as much as I can from you. So thanks a lot. But, but, but really, Ronnie, you can hit me up. I'll get you my number. If you when you do come home and you want to take a ride out on, on to Long Island on a weekend or something, you can meet me at my school. I appreciate it. It, I would love to show you the place. We'll have a good time, man. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. And bring that little bird in for a ride. You guys can have a lot. I'll go. I, I will. I absolutely plan on taking jujitsu. I plan ah, on We'll do that. We'll hit on birdos afterwards. Let me know, guys. All right. All right. Well, Jimmy, me and you still got to do picks, don't we? Or we're done? No, we're done. All right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we're done. We did the main card. I mean, the main the main event. It's just it's six fights. Um, Ronnie, thank you. Always good to see you, buddy. And you uh, plug anything? I, no, I don't have anything to plug other than... Uh, you know, no, actually, I'm on Cameo, not the uh, app, but the website. Go to my Cameo. And Ronnie, what do you want to plug? Uh, I just want to plug everyone out there. Uh, stay safe. Take care. We're almost near the end. Vaccines on the way. Take care of yourselves. That's what okay. I want to plug. Yeah. And Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie said, Ronnie said, I, a Netflix special, Ronnie said I want to plug everybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Me too. Yeah, you have that in common with Jimmy. <laughs> All right, listen, <laughs> I'll see you guys. The fights are this weekend. I can't wait to watch them. Matt, Ronnie, take care. Thanks, Ronnie. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, man. All right, bye, guys.